Today I'm going to show you how I create a dramatic black and white image inspired by old Hollywood glamour and shooting with the Canon EOS R5. Lindsay Adler here, and one of my favorite things to do is combine the old with the new. I get inspiration from old movies and vintage photographs, and then I try to incorporate my style in the creation of something new but paying homage to the past. And that's what I've done with this photograph. I decided to create something that looked like a Follies or, or burlesque performer, but classic, timeless, and elegant. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes because I bet you'll be inspired and a little bit surprised by how many lights were actually used in this shot. Now, as you look at it, it may look somewhat simple or straightforward, but every light actually is really doing a specific job to give depth to this photo, to bring out details. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. This photograph is using five different strobes. So let me break apart which each and every one of them is achieving. Now our main light source is the large umbrella with diffusion that you see on the left hand corner. This light is in a short light position, meaning it's slightly behind the subject, which then casts shadows towards the camera. This creates more depth, creates more drama, and it's a soft light source, so it wraps around, it's very, very flattering. Now with this light source being in a short light position, the subject can't move that much. She cannot be facing straight on towards camera and have that light still work. And sometimes when I have more precise lighting, it does restrict what I can do with the posing, but that's okay, I can adjust the pose or the light to work together. So the second strobe that I'm using in this case is a five degree grid and that's pointed at the face. And the only job that light has is to add a little bit more contrast to the face and just a little bit more illumination. So it tells the eye where to look in the scene. Next up, let's talk about the background. For this image, I wanted to choose a background that was definitely channeling the era that I was trying to achieve in this photograph. And so something that was textured and hand painted was a perfect choice. And so I chose a gravity backdrop. But when I chose this background, it is a little bit darker gray and I found that the subject was blending in a little bit too much. There wasn't enough separation. And so that is why I added my next light. It is a 10 degree grid pointed at the background, which is just a little bit of pop of light. It also serves to give a little bit of a glow, a little bit of a halo behind her. Now, another thing that helped me out in this shot is I shot at a wider aperture. I was shooting a little bit wider open, a little bit narrower depth of field, which meant that the background would be a little bit softer, again, bringing more attention to my subject and not allowing the background to be too distracting. Now there's another light, the fourth light that you see in the top right hand corner. This is a bare bulb. And fundamentally this light is acting to give just a little bit of kiss of light on her shoulder and a little bit more separation. It's pretty subtle, but it does add a fine detail. Now I mentioned that there were five different strobes, but so far I've only shown you four. And that's because the other strobe is actually behind my camera. So let me show you a different angle so you can take a peek at this. So this over here is the background light that I referred to. Here's the face light, that five degree grid. And then here is our fifth light. It is another large softbox with diffusion. Now what this light does is it controls the detail in the shadows, but specifically for this photo, it is essential to give that sparkle, that glimmer to the dress. So when you look at the final shot, you can actually see all that detail on the dress that wouldn't be there if I didn't have the umbrella filling in from the front. And before we take a look at the final shot, I wanna talk a little bit about my camera gear. For this shoot, I was using Canon's EOS R5, their new mirrorless camera. There are many things I loved about this camera, but one of the benefits is that I was shooting at a little bit wider of an aperture, a 4.0. And so for this shoot, I was using face and eye tracking. As my subject is moving and posing, every single shot was completely perfectly in focus because the camera is actually tracking the eye closest to the camera, making sure it's in focus. Now let's actually take a look at that final image. Here's the image straight out of camera. Now I love what the light looks like, the subject looks stunning, but I don't think color works for the vision of this photograph. It needs to be old Hollywood. And so I went into Photoshop and converted the image to black and white, which I think has far more impact. And you're paying a lot more attention to the light on her face as well as the textures in the photograph instead of the color, which seemed to dominate in the original version. There's a couple of things I did wanna change in Photoshop. For example, the feathers extended just a little bit out of the top of the frame. So I went ahead and I liquefied those down. Her chest was a little bit exposed on the right hand side. So I adjusted that. Uh, and I also cleaned up a couple other details and darkened down the edge of the frame to bring your eye back in towards the subject. So this, is what I did in Photoshop. You'll also notice that I contoured the cheek just a little bit for more shape and more drama. 
Now I mentioned that I was shooting with the EOS R5. Another awesome feature of this camera is that it's 45 megapixels. So watch as I zoom in all the way so that I can see every eyelash, I can see every gem in her headpiece, every sparkle on her dress. So this is going to give me the flexibility after the fact to print as large as I want, or I can crop in for more creative control. So let's do one more review of what each light is achieving, just so you can analyze and see it in the final photograph. The large umbrella with diffusion from the back left-hand corner is the main illumination on her face. Then there's a grid, which gives a little bit more pop and contrast. You don't see that as much in this image. The grid on the background is what gives a little bit more illumination behind her back. The bare bulb in the right-hand corner is what kisses her shoulder and the top of her hip here. And then the umbrella with diffusion in the front near the camera is what gives the detail and sparkle to the dress. So although this image may look relatively straightforward, it's actually a somewhat complex lighting setup, but every light has a job and it's what leads to the overall depth and drama and impact of this photograph. And so I'm able to create something that looks timeless, but add my modern twist. If you'd like to see more photo deconstructions, learn more of my tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.